Welcome to the Parenting Power Podcast, supporting parents with the real-life tools they need to raise the confident, interdependent people the world needs. Gail Bell and Julie Friedman-Smith interview experts who share their knowledge to assist parents in creating a home environment where kids can thrive. Today's podcast is brought to you by Beaner's Fun Cuts for Kids Hair Salons. Parenting is hard, haircuts shouldn't be. Visit BeanersFunCuts.com for a location near you. Hi everyone, welcome to the Real Life Parenting Podcast. This is Julie Friedman-Smith. And I'm Gail Bell. And our guest today is UK mummy blogger Talia Stone. While checking out her website, Motherhood the Real Deal, we found Talia's blog about teaching children gratitude, why it's important, and how to do it. And this led us to invite her to our podcast today. So thank you for making the time to join us here across the pond, Talia. Hello. Thank you so much for having me. Talia, what led you to start Motherhood the Real Deal? Well... Uh, how much time have we got? Um, well, I guess for me, it was, um, I, I have to be honest, I found the transition into motherhood pretty challenging. It was like one day I was career woman and the next minute I was the first year at least going straight from that to a stay-at-home mum. And um, I found that transition really quite challenging. I really struggled with my sense of identity. I also then realized there were so many things about being a parent and becoming a parent that people just didn't seem to talk about. And I was like, ah, I have to just try and work through this. So initially my blog, Motherhood the Real Deal, started as a kind of like working through of my thoughts and feelings and emotions. And I was just wondering if anyone else out there was feeling the same way. And as it happened, they were, because then I obviously started creating a dialogue with my readers and realized that I was not the only one and that actually at some stage most mothers tend to feel kind of overwhelmed in in their entry in motherhood and and we feel overwhelmed many many times over in motherhood after that so that was really the seed from which motherhood the real deal sprouted well right you're not alone and that can be an overwhelming feeling for so many people that's a, a great story Talia, can you share one real-life parenting tool that works for you and your family? Yes. One thing that I try to do that I have found helps just just millions and millions of times over, I think it's so hard when you are a modern-day mom and you are trying to juggle so many things and cram so many things into a short space of time. And when we talk to our children, I think a lot of the day we're just thinking about all the tick boxes that we have to achieve. You know, we've got to get them out to school on time. We've got to get dinner on the table on time and and all of this stuff. And it can put us under a huge amount of pressure. The thing that I found really helps, if you want to have children who will be more cooperative with you, is just to, when you really want them to do something, rather than just barking orders, or if you want them not to do something, try and just acknowledge what it is they want to do first. So if they really want to go to the park, but it is chucking it down outside and it's just out of the question, rather than just saying, no, we're not going to the park today. It's it's raining. You must be crazy. Say, I know you really want to go to the park today. I know you do. And that would be amazing. But it is actually really terrible weather out there today. So let's try and think of something else to do. And just that small little switch of acknowledging where their head is at and what they want to do just really changes the way that they relate to you and the way that they process that information. So if you can just take a little mindful moment to remember that one little thing in your parenting day, I promise that will really help to decrease the power struggles in your household. Talia, we could not agree with you more. Thank you for making sure that parents are aware of that because at Parenting Power are also always stressing to acknowledge children's feelings. Just stop, breathe, and acknowledge their feeling. We often describe it to our parents as like a, a balloon about to burst. And if you just acknowledge their feeling, it's like the air comes out and you, you often avoid the explosion of, of emotion. So thank you Absolutely. so much for bringing it. Yes. So, Talia, can you share with us your thoughts about the importance and benefits of teaching gratitude to children? 
Definitely. Well, I think that gratitude is probably one of the most important things we can teach children in this day and age. We live in a day and age where children, they just seem to have everything. They have everything at their fingertips. They don't really want for anything. When I was a child, sorry to sound like when I was a child, but when I was a child, I literally had one doll, some pots and pans to bash on. If I was lucky, I would go to the local supermarket for my outing once a week. But now kids, they have everything. They're constantly going from one after school activity to the other. They're going to one birthday party to another. And it is just this crazy fast forward life which has just become so overcomplicated. And I think gratitude is an amazing way of stripping things down and just teaching them what really is important in life, the basics and the values of what is important. And that for me is where gratitude is such an amazing parenting tool. So what tip that you suggest for teaching gratitude? Well, firstly, and you probably all heard this before, (laughs) you have to start with yourself. You have to lead by example. Children learn via modeling. So start with practicing gratitude yourself by having a daily gratitude practice. I'm not even saying to do that with your family. It can be a private thing that you do every night, but just to get your own mind in that mindset of gratitude. Start with that first. Once you've got that locked down and you start feeling the benefits of practicing gratitude on a regular basis yourself and also working into conversations with your children about, okay, let's talk about what we're grateful for today. And you might decide that one thing that we do, we I try when I remember to do it around the family dinner table. So we'll all talk about, okay, let's share what were we grateful for for today and we talk about the different things we're grateful for and you might find at the beginning it's like pulling teeth that is okay you know you've got to start somewhere and you might find that you people come up with completely random answers and that is okay too because all it is about is just instilling that attitude of gratitude as everyone likes to say that term but it's true it really is instilling that attitude of gratitude the other thing that I think is really nice to do which we did over the summer holidays was to have a little gratitude pot or jar where every day you just you talk about what you're grateful for and you write it down on that little slip of paper and you pop it in the pot and then at the end of the week or it could be the end of the month or it could even be the end of the year if you want you go through and you share and you talk about discuss the different things that you all contributed to that pot and it's an amazing powerful tool and it makes you feel good I love that idea that is another great tool you've just shared for our parent really practical and so easy to do and your attitude of gratitude is awesome and I know a lot of people are saying it but they're saying it because it is so worthwhile for our children and it really does distinguish the difference between a privileged child and an entitled child. Definitely. So is there anything to avoid when encouraging gratitude in our children? I don't think well I think just do not force it I think it's you have to instill it as opposed to force it and there is a big big difference you can't force a child to write a thank you letter they'll end up hating doing that kind of thing hear what they would like to do to express their gratitude obviously you can when you start off the process of trying to instill gratitude in your family you might come up with some suggestions but it's always more powerful if you go with what your child wants to do and how your child wants to do it and children have an amazing plethora of ideas if we just sit and listen to them and I'm I, I bet you will not be met with a blank a blank look when you ask them so really try and get them to make it their own when it comes to how they want to express their gratitude equally don't do that whole thing of oh well the children in Africa would be grateful for this meal because that's just going to make them feel bad and you don't really want to associate gratitude with feeling bad because that is not what it's about. You have articulated points so clearly for us and hit on some of the main tenets of really what we believe at Parenting Power. I very much appreciate your concept of meeting the child where they are and working with the child to come up with their way of doing it as opposed to there's only one way to do it, you've got to do it my way and forcing them into it. And I also really appreciate that almost every suggestion that you've given us today has been about connecting with your child in some way, whether it's at the dinner table or when you're working on this or coming together to read the notes. It's all about that interaction between parent and child. We At Parenting Power, we say that kids spell love T-I-M-E. We don't have to give 
all of our time to our kids, but when we are with them, we need to be present. And all of these tips and tools and suggestions that you've shared really, really support those ideas very clearly. So thank you for articulating them so well. We've got lots of tools to use and so much to think about. Talia, if our listeners want to find out more information from you, where is the best place for them to follow you? Sure, they can head over to my blog, www.motherhoodtherealdeal.com. Over there, they can also find out all my social media handles. They can follow me over on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. And all the information is on the website. Talia, thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a pleasure to talk to you about gratitude. And I really hope that some of those tools and tips have been useful for your listeners. I'm sure they have. Thank you. To learn more about Parenting Power, check out our website, parentingpower.ca, visit our Facebook page, or follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Parenting Power.